Hi everybody, Gerd's up here. So I want to talk with you about ZWO's Sky Atlas app. Now that is not to be confused with the Sky Atlas feature that appears on their ASI Air uh, controller. This is a standalone app that I think it's the same thing. It's in cahoots with it. I don't know. Maybe somebody who knows about these uh, these things can can add it to the comments. Anyway, this app is serves the purpose of what a controller would do on an old type mount. So when you first buy an AM3 or AM5 mount last year or any time before that is you would have downloaded the mount controller app and to see if your mount works, but you'd probably never use it again. However, sometime in April, they did a, one of their updates and I used to use that AM mount controller to do my solar work. If you guys have been following me, you know I've been doing some solar stuff. And I don't use the ASI Air when I'm doing my solar stuff. I use my computer and whatnot, but I don't have the computer control the uh, mount. I could, but I, I've been actually just going to the sun using the ASI mount app. However, in April, ZWO did this update and changed the name of it to Sky Atlas. Well, I happen to be, I didn't know it did that. I, did, I was out, um, now I wasn't at home where I didn't have any internet and I was trying to trying to look for the controller so I can go to the sun <laughs> and it wasn't there. So I was like, oh my God, what happened? So I used the, I was able to, I had, I had my hand controller for the mount and I just, you know, slewed to it normally and went on my way. When I got home, I checked into it and I found out, yeah, they changed the name of the Sky Atlas. And I actually started looking and doing some more work with this Sky Atlas app, the standalone app feature. And I've been pretty impressed with that. So I wanna go through that or show you about that. It's an app that most of you will probably never use, but it's good to know that it's there. When would you use it? Well, if you're like me, you would use it to go to the sun initially anyways. Uh, I use sharp cap to do my solar imaging and i can actually control the mount through sharp cap as well which i do after i'm slewed to the sun but i do my initial slewing using that uh, sky atlas that i was talking about now when else would you ever use this sky atlas feature if you're doing out if you're doing observational astronomy you would you you'd want to use that because you're not using the, the asi air at that point uh, you could, I suppose, you could get a camera and use the ASI Air and have it slew to a target and then take the camera off, then stick an eyepiece in and look at it that way. That's one way to do it, you could. But you can use the Sky Atlas feature. So that's one. That's another time when you'd use this. this. Okay, folks, it's the next day. I had some technical recording issues and the weather turned for the worse. So I'm doing it today. And you can also use this Sky Atlas app for prep work. It works very similar to Stellarium. I'll demonstrate how to use the Sky Atlas app coming right up. Okay, first thing you want to do, obviously, is set up your telescope. And I should mention, if you're using the app, you've got to pull or align it the old-fashioned way. And for my, when I'm doing solar work, you don't really need it super polar aligned. And I just use my phone app and just sort of line up the north and if you were doing nighttime work with the app again for observational work it doesn't need to be super polar line it, it's best you can get that I just wanted to make that statement beforehand okay so the first thing you want to do is go turn on your mount okay and then we're gonna turn our app on here it is Make sure you are in the correct hemisphere. You'll see why later on. Okay, we click, disconnect, connect with Bluetooth, and there it is. It says AM3-6D3CDA. That's the name of uh, my mount number. And you'll notice on this little screen here, it gives you ASA mount settings. It has a meridian, celestial equator, azimuth, and all these things. It has a field of view indicator. I'll go through this. Now if I click over here on this arrow in the upper left, you'll see this is what I was talking about. It gives you a 
a screen that looks very similar to Stellarium, only I think it's a little bit better in some ways. Now, if I have the Meridian and the Celestial Equator already highlighted, you can also put equatorial coordinates, azimuth, and celestial drawings if you want. I don't do any of that stuff. I just leave it alone. And I also have the ground down there so I know when I'm hitting the horizon. Okay, let's turn on the tracking. And notice it gives you sidereal, solar, and lunar. I'll put on solar because it's daytime right now. And it's already in my home position. And again, it has my Bluetooth name. And the rest of these things I'm leaving alone. Let's take a look at uh, some other stuff here. Let's go to the, I'll do the field of view stuff later. Let's click over here. If you notice on the right hand side, middle right, it has the uh, speed controller. So you can actually control your mount using these arrows. And it has a little speed like five times, four, three, two, one. Typically, I leave it in uh, five times speed, at least to start off with, if I was slewing something. And then if I'm on the sun, for example, and I want to do some minor adjustments, I'll go down to like three or four. Okay, let's go to somewhere. Let's you click on this little uh, in the upper. Oh, one more thing. If you look on the upper right-hand column, there's that little diamond-shaped doohickey. If you click on that, you'll notice you get this type of field of view. This is also sort of like Stellarium. It gives you a real wide thing if you want to look for something and you're at nighttime want to know where you're at. You can just use this thing to point and it'll tell you the direction and what objects are visible. Anyways, I'm going to turn this off again. Okay, now let's say I want to go to the sun or any other object for that matter, but I'm just going to go to the sun since it's daytime. I'm going to click over to the, the upper left column. They had that little um, oh, magnifying glass and it has these objects in here the moon mercury the those are the solar system objects if i click on the upper right corner it gives you that those categories where you can tonight's best star, stars planets comets messier ngc objects ic uh, sh2 and uh, whatnot double stars so this looks very similar to the sky atlas app in the asi air so it's very, very, very similar. But we're going to go back to the sun and planets. And I'm going to click on the sun. All right, let's go take a look. So I press go to. It's going to give me the warning. Go to the sun. Yes, yes, yes. And cannot go to the sun because it's currently below the horizon. Remember in the beginning of the demo, the mount thought we were in the eastern hemisphere for, for whatever reason. Not sure why it happened. But once I reset it, everything was fixed. Okay, I reset the hemisphere to the Western Hemisphere and am now going to go to the sun. And here it is, you can see it slewing to the sun. Okay, and then what you would do is you would see how close you are to it and typically if I have my large 40 millimeter eye, eyepiece in here and with this with this scope, I, I wouldn't be exactly centered, but really close. And then, but then what you would do is you would use these control uh, these little controllers down here, these little arrows to press it to get it exactly centered. But it gets pretty close on that. So that that's how you would do it. And if you were doing this for nighttime work, you would go to a target and you would slew into that target as best you can with these arrows. And then once you got it aligned, you just press the center cross button on the sun or whatever you're looking at, and it would go right to it. Uh, and then it would be aligned and you'd keep doing that. The more of these things you do, the better aligned it gets and your alignment will get, should get better in the evening. Okay, uh, let's go back to home here. So I'll go back to this, come back to that settings, go to where it says home position and press go home to start and there it goes. So I wanted to show you some other uh, features in here. All right, so what I was talking about the prep work and why I like this app a lot is it gives you a really good view just like Stellarium, you can scroll in and scroll in, but this app actually has stuff on here that 
may not be in Stellarium. And what I mean by that is I was just doing an object the other night, SH2173, which is the Phantom of the Opera Nebula. And in the desktop version of Stellarium, it shows exactly where it is. However, it does not show the actual nebula itself. Here in the Sky Atlas app, it shows the actual nebula too. And let me show you what I mean. I could have just typed it in too, and it would have taken me to it. But anyways, it gives me a large field of view, and all you have to do is scroll in, and scroll in even more, and here it is. It's where it's labeled next to that V743, but that's the uh, nebula. Now, let me show you something else what you can do. What, what else is really cool with this is you can come back over here and come down to where it says Field of View Indicator, turn it on, and it already has my camera in there, the 2600, and it also has a focal length of my telescope. You can change this to whatever telescope or focal length you have, and Okay, so it gives me the field of view of my camera and telescope. And if I just scroll in, uh, there it is. You can actually see the, uh, the Phantom of the Opera. This doesn't appear on Stellarium. All it would appear would just be the stars and not the actual nebula. So this program does have some advantages, and I really kind of like it. So I might use this a little bit more for prep work. I don't know. Well, that's all I have for you, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you do use this app, please, by all means, let me know how it works and how you use it in the comments section. And we'll see you next time.